Hello everyone, welcome back to Forma Therapy. This is The Culture Study. I'm the channel's video producer and your host, you can call me PD. And today we are checking out Close To Me by Black Swan. So, you guys have been requesting this, we're gonna be checking it out. Um, there's something interesting about this. You know, I was eventually gonna get to it. Uh, I got a little bit behind on my work, but you know, their debut was fine, but I wasn't quite hot on it recently. I randomly, well, I was just listening to music and, uh, you know, when, when you play a song uh, on Apple Music and then it just starts creating a station and plays random songs that you think you'd like based on what you were listening to, one of Black Swan's songs came up. It was not a title track. It was not close to me. It was up. It was a B-side from their debut album last year from Goodbye Rania. Uh, that's a wild song. And it was so wild. I was like, oh my goodness. I love this song. I, I got to check out Close To Me as soon as I can. For anyone who has not listened to Up by Black Swan, if you love old school K-pop, and I don't mean like, oh, this sounds like, a, like, oh my God, this song is from like 2010. Listen to Up by Black Swan. It's fantastic. Uh, but yeah, we're going to be checking out Close To Me. Um, before we do, uh, if you would like to support the channel, remember, you could always visit our Patreon. Of course, if you don't want to support us monetarily, you can always just hit the like button down below. Hit, uh, subscribe to our videos uh, down in the box. Doodly do. Press it. And, uh, you know, that's a free way to support us. We'd appreciate it. Let's get into the video. This is Close to Me by Black Swan, and this is your form of therapy. Oh, my God. Bit of a club beat, I'm digging it. Yeah. 
Okay. I like to focus on the video commentary on this channel, but there are often times where I kind of lose myself if a song is that good. And here's the thing, close to me, is it a perfect music video? It's not. I don't think there are any glaring errors. Um, there are some things that like, I do have some choice critique words about, but overall, it's, I wouldn't say it's a glaring issue, but all the small little problems aside in the video, when a song is this good, I can totally forgive all that, you know? I can't forgive like big glaring errors or like things that look like honestly obvious sabotage, but when it's just like small little things, when the song is good enough, hell, when the song excels, it can, it, it can forgive a lot of things for me. And that is this song. Close to me works on so many levels, so many incredible levels. Close to me, and I definitely don't want to dunk on their debut song. Their debut song, it didn't move me. Close to me moved me, but their de debut song, uh, Tonight, didn't necessarily move me. At the same time, I understand uh, a song like Close to Me wouldn't have worked as a debut song, actually. I, th I think Close to Me actually works better as a comeback song. And Tonight does have a little bit more of like, especially that, the, the rock sound and all that, it does have a little bit more of like a presence to it that works more as a debut song. But Close to Me, I feel like is a great improvement from that. Close to Me, where do we start? One, I love the vocals in this song. I feel like this song did such an incredible job of highlighting everyone's vocals. It was fantastic. Two, um, I just love the chord progression. It's a very familiar chord progression. I don't quite... I can't quite place what it reminds me of, but I love this. I love it. Um, very much it harkens back to, I would say, some older K-pop styles, maybe some early 2010s, mid 2010s, very melodical. I love it. I love it. Uh, it it kind of blew me away from the pre-chorus. Uh, just once the pre-chorus started, it kind of took an interesting turn. And I want to watch this again and uh, listen to this again, but that pre-chorus, it really grabbed my attention. And that, I thought like, you know, sometimes you, especially like K-pop nowadays, we're definitely entering an era where we have more memorable pre-courses than we have memorable courses. And oftentimes if the pre-course is really memorable, the chorus is not as memorable. Not only do they have a memorable pre-course, they raised the bar and then they nailed it. That chorus is good. It is that close to me. I can't do the falsetto that they do, but you know, it's so good. It is such a great song. Uh, I, I lost track of my numbers, but next, the non-Korean members in this group, they gave them more lines. I think a member is gone now. I, I, I'm pretty sure there were more members than this, maybe one more, but it looks like there might be a little less members, but regard whatever the case is, not only do the non-Korean members have more lines, uh, they all they also have singing lines, vocal lines. Uh, fa, is it Fatu? Fa, Fato? I actually don't know how to pronounce her name, um, but she is not relegated to just ad libs, um, hype man ad libs, and then typical you know K-pop rich rapping. She has fair evenly distributed line distribution. She also gets kind of like the highlight moment in both the uh, post-chorus rap in the second verse leading into her doing the bridge and then offsetting her like deeper tone with, I'm, I'm sorry, I, I don't quite know the other person's name, uh, with her higher voice and then how they complement each other, uh, their vocally complement each other was also fantastic so so good there is so much there's so much thought put into how well made this song is i really really love it but um i i i, I think they did a lot of good things right with this music video that um i personally had a lot of problems with in uh their initial music video they do at the same time take a few steps back and they kind of like failed on certain sides. And so I want to talk about that aspect of the music video too. So let's get into our second watch through. That's... Oh my God. 
Judy, Leah, Young, Young Hun. I love this post chorus dance beat. Okay, hold on. This is how good this song is. I keep getting enamored with this song. I keep, it's all, it's that pre chorus, like the way they set up the initial first verses, it, it feels more like it's gonna go the typical route of the, you know, talk singing K pop girl group sound, which there's nothing wrong with that. But then they, suck you in with the pre-chorus it's almost very mesmerizing you be, before you even know it you're kind of sucked into the song um but that distracted me from actually talking about the video uh so a couple things i really really like several of the things they did with this music video so this prison set is a very commonly used set in korean productions uh uh you know when, when you don't have a lot of budget totally makes sense that uh there's a lot of overlap in rental locations but there are a couple things um i would say that uh like the hallway scenes are a little uninspired uh because so it's it's, it's more of a color thing um their hairs are colorful and all which is nice but when you get into like the hallway scenes, there's like nothing going on here. And then they get, first of all, like modern prison uniforms don't have the black and white classic striped look anymore. Like it's a very, very, very old style of it, um, which I don't know why they went that route specifically. Uh, was it specifically for to have the jewel pattern in? Because I think they would have actually benefited from having either orange or blue prison jumpsuits. I believe Korea, Korea is a mix. I think you can, I think you can see brown or blue, but regardless of what it is, uh, it should have been a colored, colored outfit because uh, they are not choosing to decorate this hallway, which I feel like they should have chosen to actually just decorate the set, um, give, give, you know, blackout curtains uh, and then, uh, to toss in a light up here, um, toss in a practical up here, and then maybe put in a light in this jail cell and then give the scene a little bit more of a dynamic look and then some extra color into the scene. Um, this palette of like white on the beige and the yellow, it just, it's, you know, it works if you're like watching a TV show or a drama, but aesthetically it's very, very unflattering to look at. Now they did that well here. They absolutely uh, did that well here. I just kind of wish that uh, the production team had also done it for this hallway scene. Um, th that's why I said like this video, they do a lot of things right. And there's only a few things that um, they kind of, uh, I feel like are a few steps back. Like this scene, again, this scene, you don't really have to add much to it. Um, I would have said actually, if they had underexposed this shot a little bit, like the motivation for this practical feels completely out of place. I would have probably underexposed this, put probably a stronger light on her, give it more of an interrogation light look, um, turn on that practical right there, leave this practical, uh, maybe have a warmer light. Um, so like, I, I don't know how to describe this. See this camera and see how like behind the camera, that's clearly another room. Where that other room is, if they had like a light shining this way, out, out this way, a warmer light, I feel like it would have been better. Um, uh, I'm not also a fan of like a little bit of the inconsistent uh, uh, skin tone, uh, how they're grading the skin tone. Um, I'm always an advocate for warmer skin tone color grading. Like, you know, make them look how they look in person, like more natural color tone. Uh, 
you know, here she's pale, which, you know, if you're going to do a pale look, that's fine. Here, she's even more pale. They even give her like the cool blue sort of purplish uh, color grading. That's already like different from this one. This one's a little bit more towards like a neutral white. There's a little, there's a little pink still in there. But then when they shoot this scene, which I personally think this is, this is their like, like just color grading wise, this is their most most go uh, uh, their most gorgeous scene. Um, you know, you've you've got a much warmer tone. Everyone looks, you know, a lot more just warmer. Uh, I'm always a big fan of that. But you've got like three different skin tones going on in in the music video. Like everyone is like a diff like a different skin tone throughout different scenes. And so uh, I wish they had kind of kept uh, that consistent. So that's really only my main gripes. You know, uh, a little bit more set dressing would have been nice. Is probably my uh, only additional thing. Um, but that's a budgetary thing. You know, I, I don't think there's any way around that. So uh, on a technical level, I'm just talking about the lights. Now, things they did really, really well. First of all, everyone looks gorgeous with these hairstyles. Her with her hair down looks really, really good. I really like the pink that they stuff put in, but man, the orange pops here, but the blue is absolutely gorgeous. I love the styling. I love the styling. As much as I'm not a fan of their prison outfits, I, again, I wish the prison outfits had been a little bit more inspired, but man, the dance outfits that they're wearing, these black blazer with the gold and, oh, that's beautiful. I don't know if they added a backlight or if that's natural lighting. Either way, hair light, backlit, always a big plus, always a big plus. Looks super gorgeous, super cinematic. Always a big fan of that. Whether that's intentional practical lighting or if it's just pure like uh, natural lighting from outside, I don't know. Either way, it looks gorgeous. Uh, still uh, points in my book. Another thing is how this dance is actually shot. So if you actually look at this scene right here, I mean, just just the long zoom in. Now, this does look like it could be digital zoom. Nah, too much, too 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 much of the too much of the. I don't know whether it's a digital or practical zoom. I think it's a practical zoom mixed with, like, I think it's enhanced uh, in editing as well, though. Um, that shot was ambitious, totally works. And they, the scene and the dancing is shot way better than the Tonight music video. My problem with the Tonight music video is it felt very claustrophobic and flat. Uh, it happens a lot when you shoot in small rooms and when you're shooting flat against the wall. Here, you have depth. Um, you know, one that comes from the actual set, the pillars and stuff adds on to that. The various different lighting adds on to that. But I think it was also very intentional. You know, the dance is just sh shot way better here. You know, this scene right here, they kind of have no choice but to shoot it flat, you know. But still, I think they shot this music video so, so well on all the other regards. Uh, as I said, I'm not a fan of basically any of the white on white scenes. Just the white on white scenes. It's a little. I I feel like actually for these scenes, the uh, the mugshot scenes, it actually works. It actually works because it's very brief. You've also got uh, it's a little bit more zoomed in. It's a bus shot, so it's a little bit more aesthetically pleasing. Here again, this if it was just a frame of the music video like this right here, like this is not an interesting framing right here. This is not an interesting shot or scene, right? And so. Like if you took a screen grab of this and showed it to somebody, it looks, it could almost pass for home video. Here also, not much going on. Like they just threw up a bunch of signs and they thought, all right, well, that'll work. I, I, I don't know. It doesn't work for me. Doesn't work for me. Um, definitely needs more lighting. There's like no lighting. It's like all natural lighting almost. Um, they probably have a bounce somewhere, but like, it's like basically natural lighting. I, I just, I, I feel like it, it's not enough. It's not enough. Mm -hmm. 
Interesting. So they threw in what was the bridge rap verse into the second verse in this song. Also, hold on. Let me confirm. Aser, Aser, Hage, Pull Up. First of all, that's just a, that's a very good lyric. I like that. But one thing I like is also they gave Fatu, uh, well, I don't know if they gave or if she herself actually just learned more Korean and felt comfortable singing more Korean. But I feel like this song, it's, you know, her, pronunci her pronunciation isn't 100%, but I'm always of the team of i would rather see somebody try and not do well than not try at all i'm i'm of that kind of camp um the, well i guess it's circumstantial but uh with this case i feel like one there's a lot more korean in in uh fatu's lines but also two i would say not only is it a lot more i would say it's pretty even like it doesn't feel like she's singing or rapping in any more english than any other k-pop idol would most K-pop idols and a lot of Koreans speak with Korean and a lot of borrowed words from English. So you're going to hear a lot of English words in other K-pop idol songs too. And when you have non-Korean members, it tends to be that like, like large portions of their verses are in English. But hers, it feels like it's genuinely like kind of split down the middle. It's like just as much Korean as any other Korean idol would, even if the pronunciation, like her pronunciation is a little rough at the beginning of the song, but I was kind of like, whoa, she's singing in Korean. That's still like, people appreciate that kind of effort a lot more. And so I'm, I'm totally digging this. Oh, she's close, look at that, look at that, oh. Ooh, I love what she does with her voice right there. Oh, it's a very familiar corporate progression. I still remember what. All right, that is definitely natural light, but whatever. But okay, it's natural light. So what I was commenting on here, that's definitely natural light now that I can see the window, but... Is that also natural light? That might be natural light. But not this part. This part right here, that's not natural light. They definitely... That's... Well, it's a mix. I don't know. But they definitely added that light. Some people do not add the light into the background and then it'll look a lot flatter. These scenes in her in this jail cell looks good because they added that extra backlight. So, yeah. I think they definitely intentionally made sure that that back window was definitely lit. Even if they didn't light it artificially. Oh, there is a spotlight right behind her. Okay. That, they did artificially like that. Interesting. This looks a lot like daylight. It might have been a mix of both. Choreography is dope as well. It's very, very visually pleasing. Also, these shots where they're shooting up top, very inspired. Wow. Wow, 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 wow. Wow. 
wow. You know, I was definitely a little worried about this group um, just because of kind of like the label. Um, you know, there's a whole history behind that. I'm sure people are mostly already aware of it or people can look it up, but this was handled so well. The song is fantastic. And the music video, any qualms I have about the music video after watching it a second time, it's definitely not the video production team's fault. Um, I'm definitely just more not a fan of just the white on white, but I think the, and them not set decoing uh, most of the hallways and like the white on white scenes is budgetary limitations. I, I, I totally see like whoever the video team was, they totally maximized what they could of what was available. And I think they did a fantastic job. Uh, the inconsistent uh, skin tone color grading, that's a video team thing. But mind you, you know, a lot of K-pop companies do that. I'm just a stickler about consistent skin tone color grading, but this was fantastic. I think the song, I'm going to give it a 10 out of 10. The song's fantastic. Fantastic. Music video, 8 out of 10. I like it. I like it a lot. You know, um, I do think like it, it's just the rest is just a budgetary issue. But if I have to give an objective score, I would give it an eight out of 10. But if I have to give it on effort and like improvements from the last music video, I think it's also, it's like a solid nine. You know, it's really, really well done. Uh, but guys, that's Black Swan's close to me. What a fantastic first comeback. And honestly, if this track record continues, you know, the potential of seeing more non-Koreans in K-pop, if it's this, if it's handled like this in term, like, I'm not talking about anything else. I'm not talking about promotions. I'm not talking about inner workings and how the comp company operates. That is, that is like a completely different conversation. But you got to start with the music first. You got to start with the music first. And if you can make music like this and it feels inclusive and it feels like, the non-Korean members are not being treated like foreigners and they feel like much more integrated into the song, like completely 100% integrated into the song and you make good stuff like this and you give moments where they are highlighting their vocals. My God, Fatu sounded great in that bridge. I think, I think more non-Koreans in K-pop in the future is definitely a higher possibility you know it, it, it's really about you know people who can lay the groundwork and i i think close to me is just a really really fine example of just a really really well done i guess i don't know if they're i don't know if they would label themselves an, as an international or a global group um that's up to them but just i i, I think it's fantastic i think it's really really well done uh, but guys, let me know. What did you guys think about Close to Me from Black Swan? Let me know in the comments down below. Uh, if you guys uh, enjoyed this, you would like to support the channel, consider visiting our Patreon. Uh, you could also hit the like button down below. Leave a comment. Uh, we would appreciate it. Check out our other videos over here, and we will see you guys next time. Bye.